Everything good, everything bright, everything holy, everything right, everything worthy, all that I should. And all is well, cause I'm gonna dwell on everything good. My friend, I don't know your need. Or troubles, or the storm that is raging in your soul. There seems no hope, the fear is overwhelming. Call on Jesus now, He is the help you need. Jesus. Just see his face, the hooks of friend you'll find, and your need he just in time. So in the storms you face, just see his face, the hooks of friend you'll find, and your need he just in time. Presence makes the difference. Yes, it does. In all situations. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. And uh, I believe Bill sang that song one time, and uh, you said <coughs> there was a person there <coughs> suicidal. That, uh, yeah. That, and it was right after I'd written that song. And now, you wrote that song, and make it clear you wrote the song, and Becky recorded, but I also sang it before. Right, right. And, uh, there, there it was to help someone. You know, it's wonderful to be spirit-led. I'll never forget when Becky first had uh, won that competition when she, we'd first gotten together and gotten married, and uh, they wanted to put a song on the radio from hers, and so I said, well, Lord, if you can use me to write a song, I'll write a song. I don't play anything. I don't play any instruments. And, uh, in fact, I've told churches I play the jug and the washboard. <laughs> and uh, when I said that, one church, they brought a jug in the next, next service and a washboard. They wanted me to do a special. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, I'll never forget the Lord gave me the song Untold Stories, you know. And, and the Lord's given me a couple since then. And I uh, thank the Lord. It's been a blessing to somebody, Amen. and uh, especially to the truckers. We give them the CD, and and uh, so many are touched uh, by it. Yes. And so we want the Holy Spirit most of all in everything we do, don't That's we? That's right. Amen. Amen. From uh, the time we open these doors to this sanctuary, we want to be spirit-led. It's what we need in this hour. We need the Holy Ghost. In 2016, we need yes. his guidance, his help, his Hallelujah. leadership. Hallelujah. And we need to follow close to him, cling to him. That's right. Make it your goal in 2016 to know him. Yes. And uh, one way you can do that is read your Bible. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's a wonderful time to, to uh, start reading the Bible through in a year. Um, if you need, they, they even have some special Bibles, I believe, up at Ollie's there. Only beautiful Bibles uh, that are yearly Bibles, you know, they give the date. And uh, I believe they're only $5, and I think even leather or something, real nice cover. And uh, 
you can pick one of them up and start your Bible reading. You're mm -hmm. only uh, three days behind. You can catch up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, but make it your goal to, to know the Lord. Amen. And get as close to Him as you ever could be. And that's a little bit what I want to talk about tonight. In Numbers chapter 9. Numbers chapter 9. And uh, starting at verse 15. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. When the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, help us tonight, Lord. We ask for your guidance and your help. Lord, please come down and minister. Lord, there's places in our heart that can only be touched by you. And I ask, Lord, tonight a special grace, a special mercy come down in our midst that we might be lifted up in this hour. We just pray right now for the guidance of the Spirit in this service. Lord, let us all leave this place saying it has been great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Give you praise and glory in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just read the scripture. Of course, the Israelites, as they put up the tent of the tabernacle unto the Lord, that the presence of God showed up. Yes. And it goes on even on the verses we didn't read on into the chapter and talks about whether it was two days the cloud stayed, they were to stay two days there. And if the cloud lifted up, they were to go. Whether it stayed a month, they were to stay there a month. And, uh, and as soon as that cloud lifted and the fire moved, praise God, they were to move. And I believe that this was in the scripture, that we would be a church of the Spirit. Amen. Oh, Amen. listen, if we don't get close to his presence, we're going to miss out. Right. I like uh, a little saying Becky told me before church, he heard on Facebook. Someone said, uh, a part-time Christian isn't going to beat a full-time devil. <laughs> isn't that the truth? And so we need to get closer as we can to God. Be filled with his presence to follow him. And just as the children of Israel were commanded that when the cloud began to move, when it began to go, they were to follow what the follow the Spirit's power. Listen, I'm here to tell you, if we don't have the cloud of his spirit in this place and the fire by night, I'm here to tell you, we're dry and empty. That's right. We're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to prosper. We're going to have holes in our pockets. We're going to have sickness in our bodies. We're going to have things go wrong all the time. But I'm here to tell you, praise God, if we'll choose to follow him, we can know that we have the assurance that his guidance is around us, his angels are about us, that we are receiving of him, and that we have his spirit. <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. Alarms are going off. Time to move. <laughs> praise God. And, uh, but uh, today we have the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
And his fire came down and rested on them as they waited in one accord to receive of the Lord that which was promised, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, what a wonderful thing to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To have him literally come down. We are called the temple of the Holy Ghost. Think about it. And uh, as, they, as the cloud would move, they were to fall and move everything with that cloud. We're to follow God's Spirit. God has something to say. He has a word for us. He has a direction. He has a compass for us to follow. And if we submit to God, if we'll follow Him, only good things can lie ahead. I truly believe it. We know we're going to face trials. We know we're going to face temptations. We're going to face hard times. Times that kind of can put us in despair, saying, how can I get through this? But I'm here to tell you that God, with God, what would I do without God? <laughs> I need Him more than ever. He's brought me through so much, and He's going to bring me through what's ahead. And uh, there is no, no uh, help for me if I stay lagging behind when the cloud moves. See, God has a purpose for your home. He has a leadership for your home. Things that you're to do in your home, He leads us. He guides us. He speaks to us. And if there's any time we ever needed that guidance, it's in 2016. It's in the days that lie ahead. Listen, we may have started out quiet here in America, but the Middle East is on fire right now. Israel had a terrorist attack right on New Year's Day. And now there's all that trouble with the clerics that they put to death and uh, the embassy and all the things going on. Uh, there's all kinds of trouble. Things are getting stirred up. And uh, there's no doubt that soon, very soon, we're going to see the king. Yes. There's no doubt in my mind that the signs are before us. And uh, we're going to see a great gathering, a trumpet blast that calls his people out of this world. And I want to tell you something. I want to be found close to him. Amen. I want to be close to the Lord. I want to hear his voice. Oh, the comforting power of the Holy Spirit that is with us and he can lead us and guide us and help us in everyday life. I'll never forget uh, being with my mom and dad on a trip, and I've shared it before, but, uh, you know, just to have a leading of the Spirit. My parents were, we had uh, had some cancellations on, our, on a trip, and uh, that was to help us financially to get through the trip were those church services. And uh, so... We were coming home from our trip, and we were running out of money. <laughs> and we were coming down through Georgia, and uh, the Stubbs family pastored down there near Atlanta. And the Stubbs family sang here years ago. What year would that have been back? Uh, oh, 70. 70. <laughs> you know, mid-70s probably, late 70s maybe. And... Uh, but they came and sang in this church, and we got to be good friends with them. And so we uh, just thought, well, we're going to go in and visit them at their church. We didn't tell them they were, we were coming. They didn't know where we were in the whole country. And uh, they were having Sunday night church. We thought, well, we'll uh, get there. Uh, you know, we were running a little late. We thought maybe their church service started at 7 well, here, uh, we didn't realize they'd had church at six, so we were getting in at the end of their service. Well, here they all are at the altar, and, and uh, God came down and spoke to Sister Stubbs, the pastor's wife. And uh, she didn't know where we were in the whole country. And uh, she says, they're all at the altar. And she says, 
I believe we're to take up an offering. The Lord spoke to me for the Russ family, wherever they are in the country. We're to take up an offering for the Russ family of $200 to help their ministry. Well, we met the ushers at the back door. We walked right in. It was a miracle. God had used her, and the Holy Spirit had used her to, in a word of knowledge, really, and a, a prophecy to take care that the Lord would take care of us. And my, you know, it was kind of a confusing situation because they said two hundred dollars. So here they'd come up seven dollars short, and my dad didn't even know what they were taking the offering for. So he put seven in, <laughs> into his own offering. And, uh, and he said, wait, wait, wait a minute, brother. I said, hey, you don't understand. This offering's for you. Well, when the dust had settled and we realized God had just done a miracle. Yes. He'd just done a miracle. And God had used Sister Stubbs in that way. Oh, to be a part of a spiritual church. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, to have the gifts of the Holy Ghost. That can minister to us in the time of need. Hallelujah. All the time someone's given a word just when you needed to hear it. Or a song came right when you needed it. Hallelujah. Oh, that's being close to the cloud. Hallelujah. That's being close to the fire. Oh, hallelujah. Let's have the direction of the Spirit that will turn things upside down. Praise God. Lord, help us to have that fresh vision that will help us to get closer to Him. You can't get close enough to God. <laughs> you know, there's always that, you know, there's always been that question where's the healings? Where's the, you know, well, it's not that God's on vacation, believe me. No. I'll tell you, there's. There's commitments we've yet to see amongst ourselves that those that have gone before us have done. Those that received those kind of miracles. Uh, those that were in all night prayer meetings and sacrificed and still went to work after sacrificing uh, prayer and, 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 and spending time and, and uh, you know, getting... People to do things for churches nowadays is, is very hard. I heard someone saying it today. You know, we, we're kind of stuck on spiritual milk. He said, but to take in what God wants us to really do, take sacrifice. That's a little harder. <laughs> you got to chew that. You know, you got to take it in. And, uh, and it's really where we're lacking today. Today in the church, uh, uh, we see why things aren't happening is because of the sacrifice. There were people that would sacrifice time for the things of God. You just try to get someone nowadays to give up a Saturday for something for God. It's a hard thing. You want to start a ministry, say a visitation ministry or something. Uh, it takes commitment, but all oh, the, the blessing from it. That's right. When you give yourself for something for God, those sacrifices aren't thrown to the wind, are they? Amen. Hallelujah. But they're blessed. God sees those things and he blesses those things as we step out, hallelujah, in faith, as we spend time in prayer, as we read his word, hallelujah, that word can come alive in your spirit. He can give you a word Amen. just in the time you need it. Amen. Oh, thank God for his living word. Think of Moses. He couldn't get close enough, could he? The people thought he's a little too close because his face was shining. They had to put a veil over his face. That's how close he was getting to God. And, uh, and no doubt those same things can happen in our midst, in our lives. We know our very own pastor. 
that has gone on to be with the Lord experienced things from God that I've not experienced those things. I haven't in my life, I haven't seen a hand come down out of the ceiling and rest on my hand, the Lord's hand. I haven't seen something like that or be at an altar of prayer and feel like five minutes and you look up and it's going for 12 o'clock and you've been in a spirit of prayer and he thought he just knelt his head for five minutes. Well, here he'd been in interceding for, for hours before the Lord. Boy, those things are special. You're getting into a different dimension. That's where you're no longer sacrificing and following the tabernacle of the flesh, but you're following the tabernacle of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If we sow to the things of the flesh, of the flesh we will reap corruption. We won't get anywhere, will we? But all to sow to the things of the Spirit will of the Spirit reap Hallelujah, eternal life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The things of the Spirit. You see, there's, there's a birthday I had in 1968. I was born. And uh, the candles are getting more and more. <laughs> the cake starts to look like it's on fire. <laughs> and all the candles you had on every year. And, uh, you know, that's one birthday. But oh, to be birthed of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. To be born again. Oh, there's a life of the flesh, but then there's a life where you've been born again of the Spirit. And hallelujah, you're a child of God. And when the voice of the Lord goes forth, hallelujah, just like David heard in the trees going out before him, when you hear the Lord make your move, praise God, you will hear His voice speak to you in this age. God has not been silenced. But we can be given understanding as we draw close to him. Yes. Give us, Lord, that understanding we need. Hallelujah. The voice of the Lord speaks to us. Jesus said in John chapter 3, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Amen. Oh, thank God that he can come down in a service like this and you can think, oh, it's just going to be another service. Hallelujah. Just another time. Just another Wednesday night or another Sunday night. Another Sunday morning, the same old songs. But all oh, thanks be to God if you're open to the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, God can sweep through this place and touch our lives. Hallelujah. And we can leave here. Hallelujah. With something to shout about. Glory to God. He can take those heavy chains and burdens that we carry yes. and lift it off our shoulders. Hallelujah. 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 I was almost at the end of my schooling and was ready to give up in Bible school. Ready to throw in the towel. I was going to give up. And uh, I even left the school in the middle of the week and went home to Central Assembly of God. Mark Smith, he's gone on to be with the Lord. But here he was filling in that night. And I thought, here, not even my pastor's here to help me. I got to have this fill in. <laughs> and usually, Brother Mark, he was really educated. And, uh, you know, he wasn't much of a preacher. He, he uh, more of a teacher. And boy, that night, you know, God saw me on the turnpike. God saw me in my room when I'm saying, I'm giving this thing up. God saw me when, when I got to church late. And, uh, and I was like, 
oh, who's preaching tonight? You know, <laughs> we all got our favorites anyway. And uh, but uh, there I was, you know, kind of down, just upset. And there I walked in right at preaching time. And Mark Smith gets behind that pulpit and he goes, God gave me a message tonight. He, uh, I, you got to hear this. God, God's given me a message like he'd had a revelation, like a vision that had happened to him. I've never seen him like this in, in my life. And he preached on the will of God. And it was every word was just for me. <laughs> God orchestrated a service just for me. I was going to throw in the towel and give it all up. And think God knew where I was at. Hallelujah. And he used someone that could hear the Spirit of God. And he was on fire. He said, I don't know who's here, but this message is for someone tonight. And at the end of that service, I went to the altar. And I told him what a kind of a jam I was in. I was needing some inspiration. I was needing the Lord to help me to carry through and to finish my senior year. That's how the devil can storm in sometimes, but oh, hallelujah, for the power of the Holy Ghost that can break the yoke of bondage, that can send devils out the door, hallelujah, that can break chains that bind, oh, and set us free. Yes, Jesus. And they got around me and they all prayed for me. I said, brother, I don't know who you're talking to. I know you're talking to me. I don't know if there's anyone else. But I'll guarantee you they laid hands on me and God brought me through. Amen. And you know what? I thank him for it. That's right. Folks, Amen. his presence means everything. Amen. Oh, if we can just spend some time seeking yes. his presence, seeking for this church, seeking for the congregation, seeking for our loved ones and those that are going through trials and tribulations to lift us up, lift each other up, hallelujah, to lift the pastor up yeah, and to pray yeah. for her that she will be led of the Holy Ghost and God's yeah. already blessed and touched her in mighty ways and God can do more, Amen. hallelujah. Those that have visited and those that have left, but they need the touch of the Lord. Let's not forget them. Keep praying. Oh, that the presence of God will fill their lives. Yes. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful yes. thing to have the presence of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And remember, when the Holy Ghost fell, they were all in one accord. They were in one accord. Yes. And they were seeking Him. Yes. And there was the love of the spirit that was there and the Holy Ghost shook the place and they were filled and spoke with new tongues. Hallelujah. Oh, there is a place we can find. Hallelujah. That is so powerful and anointed that will keep us. Hallelujah. No matter what the headlines say, no matter what happens uh, in this world, there's a place that God can lead us and keep us. Hallelujah. But we've got to be sensitive to the Spirit, which in 1 Corinthians says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world. Think of that. But the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. See, there's a way man will lead you. There's advice man can give you. And it can even look like, well, this is the way we're supposed to go. How many times did Jesus do things that just really did not make sense? Using spit in someone's eye. That's just not something I can picture us doing here but I guess if we're open to the spirit of God I never get a trucker he, 
he got into a Nazarene church and and uh, he said, I wanted to get anointed with oil. And uh, here they anointed his tongue. <laughs> I said, well, that's a good place to do for a truck driver, anoint his tongue. <laughs> get him sanctified, you know. And, uh, but, uh, you know, to be led of the Spirit of God and not man. Man, you know, we can, all, we can go to classes. We got preachers a dime a dozen. You look up in the assembly's book, it's that thick for preachers. But I, 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 I pray they're led of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Not just a classroom experience. That's right. Some of them, I wonder if they're filled with the Holy Ghost, if they have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These things are serious. We've got to have an experience with God. Think what God put on Moses. To slap the waters of the Red Sea? I mean, that's not, that don't seem very wise, does it? It didn't seem like there was a program, got some, some educated plan that was going to just open up the waters. No, it was going to be God. And we would realize how small we are and how big God is. Yes. That's where he wants us. Hallelujah. He wants us to realize we're nothing without him. I got to lean on him. I got to have his power. Yes. Oh, Lord, give me the wisdom of the spirit. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Yes, there are. We can serve the old tabernacle of the flesh and be religious. You know, put in our time. Say, I pay my tithes. Can just say I was here, you know, for this or that. But, oh, there's a place in God that goes deeper than just a religious experience. Amen. Oh, praise God. Where you are moved by him of the spirit and where he leads, you're going to follow. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want that spirit tonight. Amen. I want to follow him. Boy, when that cloud starts moving, Lord, let me know it. Let me know where you're leading. Yes. Let me know where you're guiding. Yes, Jesus. Oh, how many times have we all missed disaster because of a delay or something? God, right. something was going on. Right. You say, boy, I'd have been in the wrong place at the wrong time That's if right. that hadn't happened. Oh, we have angels about us, don't we? Yeah. Praise God. He's protecting. He's speaking. He's moving. Get closer to him this year. Amen. When this year ends, may you be able to say that I'm closer than I've ever been Amen. to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> when I go hunting up there with Billy up there on the hill and all these guys get together hunting, that's what I say in my prayer. The way I mean pray for we go hunting. I say, Lord, let it let the next year let us all say we got closer to the Lord. Amen. That's a good prayer. And that's what we need to get closer to Him. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. These altars are open. Let's stand to our feet. Praise God. You need special prayer. We will pray with you. disciples were on a boat with Jesus when a tempest arose upon the sea there seemed no hope the fear was overwhelming then the Savior awoke and the storm
Storm. 